specify because rahu is not a person who you have to catch and put in the prison he is not a person like that <laughs> he is simply that person which is running behind to make you not happy to give you pleasure so the mm-hmm. ultimate summary for rahu is go from pleasure to happiness then rahu will automatically lose because ultimately uh, the uh, all the nine planets they are who they are in a way lord vishnu's they lord vishnu manifests in a way through them so no planet is bad some people say rahu is bad no he's not bad and in spiritual path they say rahu rahu will give you distractions and allurements but do you know he is he is also helping you in your spiritual path mm mm-hmm. you may be thinking how in the universe i am speaking for 2 hours on rahu and now at the end i tell rahu will help you in your spiritual journey how in the universe mm mm-hmm. rahu will give you allurements to test you suppose you have joined some spiritual club and some group and uh, you have started chanting mantras and you have gradually you have left eating meat and uh taking alcohol and smoking and all this mm. then what rahu will do that old friend 5 years back suddenly will give you a phone call maybe when mercury is red too at that time he does that hey you know i got this new thing Mm. Would you like to try it? <laughs> so Rahu will plant a desire inside you, and then what you do? Then when the desire comes, either you say yes to it, <laughs> or you get frightened and you are like, "Oh my God, this desire is I have to somehow say no." <laughs> don't, no, I don't want to. <laughs> so, so then then what you have to do if you are in that category if you are in the first category then okay oh yeah desire is there i will fulfill it mm. but suppose you are in that second category oh, please <laughs> then you have to intensify your spiritual practices 10 times otherwise you know the moment you go to your bed in the night it's over <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Like there was a, one, of, one of my friend. Uh, he's a great, uh, you know. He's very elevated now spiritually, or at least he's very committed. But there was a time once when he used to visit prostitutes. He had a very degraded lifestyle, mm. and he used to watch pornography with so many friends, adult material. It has to do with his Rahu. Yeah, I mean something to do with Rahu, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> then, then what happened? Uh, now, then from 2010 onwards, we were and he was so degraded. I will tell you that, uh, like Lord Ram, he's one of the avatars of Lord Vishnu. Can you imagine? Maybe somebody does this in Australia or America. It's not a big issue, but in India, born in a Hindu family, he took the photo of Lord Ram and just. kick the photo like this he said this is god i will kick you in your face and i was like my god mm. <laughs> he was the personification of rahu you know <laughs> rahu was not i don't know where rahu is i don't know his chart your guess But is like he's in the first ha- in the first house maybe i don't know which house rahu is <laughs> <laughs> Now he's in some special zero at house, maybe you know, which is before the ascendant also. Or maybe it's with so, the moon. Maybe yes. So this person, uh, then what happened was uh, he uh, in 2010 when I was in South India and I started doing lot some spiritual activities with many people there in South India. So there he used to come and uh, now uh, he. <laughs> you have all these things in the back of your mind you know 
visiting prostitutes mm-hmm. watching pornography 6 hours 8 hours a day my god how can somebody be alive if you do all those and then you come to a spiritual program and they tell you that you have to chant the name of god it's very difficult my god mm. because your mind is so much hooked to physical enjoyment that the conception that something beyond this can you know skin can give you happiness is is very difficult it's very yeah. artificial but then he used to you know do mantras vigorously then he used to read read shrimad bhagavatam very vigorously used to read He was, he had done so much austerities my god you know he decided that till the time my my <laughs> desires <laughs> don't <laughs> go under control i will i will not take breakfast so he will only eat after he will only take lunch he will not take anything in the morning mm-hmm. and now you may be thinking Oh, what is so big about it? You know, maybe somebody gets up at nine o'clock, and three hours you don't eat, and twelve o'clock you have lunch. But that was not the schedule. The schedule was he used to get up at three thirty in the morning, and he used to chant mantras. You know, three <laughs> thirty to twelve thirty is how much? Nine hours. Mm. Nine hours you are not eating anything. Oh my God. <laughs> and he used to do all this do all this do all this and he was very he was very much away from all these things and he was very happy but one day what happened was he called me one day and we met and then he told me that you know actually the place where i used to visit in those days you know one of my old friend <laughs> mm-hmm. he called me and i did not talk The, that hello which i heard that one word you know hello <laughs> that the moment i knew it is he i cut the call immediately i switched off my phone i'll throw it in the water <laughs> he said but that one word hello has brought all my memories back so he's telling me that for the next 7 days <laughs> wherever whichever room you are sitting you you sleep in the night i will come and sleep beside you because i don't know if i sleep alone what i will end up doing wow. and then seven days you know we we both were together and then very nicely things worked out and then after six days around he said i am fine now <laughs> mm. but that's the beauty of rahu you know rahu rahu was that hello that word <laughs> <laughs> that word yeah yeah and and now the interesting thing is if that phone call would have not come he would have been like a normal some casual no spiritual person yeah. yeah but now because that fear came he intensified his practices 10 times more the he was chanting a uh, 64 rounds of mantras 64 rounds means one round is 108 times wow so 64 round will take you 8 hours 8 <laughs> hours chanting mantras my god I mean, god will come and I'll stop it man <laughs> that's our level yeah mm. and now if you see him he's like and now if i tell you you know oh look at this person he's that person about whom i was telling who is to do all this you'll be like come on it's impossible it can't happen impossible i mean it cannot happen only that uh, this person my god look at him he did all this i can't believe it you will think maybe it's like a fairy tale complete transformation in the last 8 years i have seen mm-hmm. no, it's like completely is a different person only and now my my situation is if I, I, i get sad sometimes i have to end up calling him <laughs> and then he's like oh what happened why are you sad this happened that happened he said don't worry god will take care this will happen that will happen mm. and then i was like yes you are the same person who told me can i stay seven nights with you or otherwise i'll be destroyed so now he's on that you know he's on a 
Rolls Royce now. He's going in that Royal Road. <laughs> oh wow! Mm. And he tells that I'm I'm very grateful to God that He has offered me such horrors at times. That phone call, hello. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And that is one thing which I know. God knows how many things which He would have faced. He doesn't tell everything to me. He just told one thing. And now God is, you know, rewarding him. He is a very prolific uh, speaker of the Srimad Bhagavatam. He has a lot of followers. And now I came to know he recently got married also. And he's staying happily now. His wife has conceived also. And they are going to deliver also. Very nice. Amazing life he's having. But maybe... Even now, Rahu sometimes, you know, hello. Yeah. <laughs> but Rahu will do that. And when Rahu does that, we should be thankful. Because Jesus Christ, you know, somebody said, no, hate the disease, not the diseased. Who said that? Jesus said, right? Yep. yep. Hate the disease, not the diseased. So don't, don't hate what Rahu is or who Rahu is. He's not a bad person. Rahu just wants one thing. Rahu, what this Saturn and Rahu are beautiful planets, you know. I have made tons of videos on these planets in my channel. You talk of big, big planets and all these great so-called benefits, Jupiter and Venus, you will get nothing from them, I'm telling you. They will give you good things and they will go away. <laughs> that's why, that's, that's my take. I mean, that's something really personal. That's my personal view. Like when I see when people call Saturn because they are having a bad time or they are in Sarasati or whatever. I, yeah, Sarasati. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sarasati. So, and, and, and people curse Saturn because of what is happening in their life or Rahu. And I never use the word malefic in Spanish, um, although well, it's what it is, no? It has, I, I use the word challenging, <laughs> but still they come here to do something and i i think as you say as you describe it they're beautiful beautiful energies yeah beautiful means the problem with see this is the problem with english you know it's not the problem with english but when you translate things mm. like the word which is used for benefits is somya in the scriptures exactly Som, somya means soft Soft means like um, soft means which gives you very easily. Mm. And the word for malefics is krura. Krura means strict. Doesn't give you easily. So what they have made is oh these are a bunch of four great planets these are a bunch of five bad planets. But the amount of cleansing Saturn and Rahu does Provided you are in a spiritual path, quote unquote, conditions apply. Condition. Otherwise, you are in that. Otherwise, you are in the cycle. You know, Saturn is beating you, Rahu is alluring you. You are going, 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 running to astrologers. This is going, that is going. Provided you are deeply rooted to spirituality, then they are the most beautiful planets. The benefics will have their own roles. The benefics, like, I mean, benefics are also needed. Jupiter will give you a great relationship with your guru. Mm. That's something which you can cherish for eternity. Like whenever I have some problem, you know, like anything is there, then I just call so many gurus I have. Three, four. Primarily there are two. So whenever I have just, whenever I have problem, no, no, no issue. Just phone call. Tring, tring. <laughs> oh, lucky. Lucky you. And then, I, and then I call and then mm -hmm. they pick up and they say, uh, and most of the times, Halfway only they tell, I know what you are facing. This is the problem. This is the solution. I don't even need to tell the entire problem. <laughs> so that blessing Jupiter can give you. Reading the scriptures, sharing knowledge with others, that Mercury can give you. Moon can give you absorption because moon is the mind, right? <laughs> moon is the planet where Jupiter gets exalted. Moon, moon sign, cancer. Mm. Which means you are totally absorbed in God. Nothing else is visible to you. And Venus, Venus is what? Venus is attraction. Ultimately, you have to be attracted to God, right? 
if the attraction is only not there, everything is superficial. Superficial means, oh, I am just, you know, reading some dry books, some Sanskrit is there, it's very boring. So people say, Venus is opposing spirituality. They don't know what Venus is. <laughs> Venus is basically laulium. Laulium is the word which is used. Laulium means intense. It's like a mad, it's like mad attraction for something. And generally in the material world, that translates for the opposite sex. Oh my God, I'm madly in love with her. So Venus is not actually opposite sex. Opposite sex in today's world has become the way how we express Venus. Okay. Okay. Because Venus ultimately is what looks, right? Mm. And in, if you read the Brahma Samhita, which is there, it is said, uh, Kandarpa Koti Kamaniya Vishesha Shofa. Kandarpa means the Cupid. <laughs> Cupid which makes us stupid out of us sometimes. <laughs> so Kandarpa Koti, Koti means millions, thousands. Kamaniya means there is no comparison of Lord Krishna's beauty with thousands of cupids. <laughs> so when we are attracted to, because we have to be attracted to Lord Krishna's form, right? That's Venus. Venus is not just catching somebody and <laughs> and moon is what? Moon is love basically. Pure love. Unconditional love. So you have to love God unconditionally. You have to love your guru. That's Jupiter. And then malefics also have their role. Saturn, you have to do austerities. You fast on Ekadashis. I will not eat that. I will not do this. I will not. Saturn is all the no, you know. No, 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 no. Religious books. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. Saturn shows all the rules which you should not do. Uh, the things which you should abstain from, which is not good for your spiritual life. And Ketu will show off, be detached. <laughs> You're doing spiritual practices. It does not mandate, mandate that God will give you elevation because spiritual progress is not obtained. It is awarded. But of course, uh, Krishna says in the Gita, so if you do that, then he will obtain my blessings. So God is not a whimsical person. Okay, he's from Germany. I will not give him. You know, I will give only my mercy to Americans. He's not a whimsical person like this. He's also a person like you and me. So when we try to approach him, even in this realm, if somebody has done something wrong with us mm -hmm. and the person uh, genuinely, sincerely seeks forgiveness, and even in this world, people forgive. <laughs> mm. Mm. I mean, then why will God not forgive you if you genuinely ask forgiveness? Is he so cruel? Is he so, you know, is he so hard-hearted? He likes to punish you. No, it's not like that. He is not punishing you. You are punishing yourself. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing, you know, malefics are having their own roles. And Mars is very important in spiritual life. Mars. Mars is very important because Mars is Brahmacharya, celibacy, preserving the semen. If that is not happening, then all other practices are like, it's very superficial. <laughs> that does not mean that uh, you go to the forest, but uh, you can you can unite with your wife to have children or regulate that. And Mars also shows, you know, our vigor and our passion. And we can distribute spiritual literature also. Like one of my friend, uh, he recently, he re recently he distributed a spiritual book, a Bhagavad Gita, to one of, uh, I don't know what you call gundas there. <laughs> gundas means those who are roaming with knives and to kill you. you know? So he was roaming with a Bhagavad Gita somewhere here in France. I heard. So he uh, he was going, going, going and suddenly he saw this person with a knife. You know. 
and he was like oh god today i am gone <laughs> and then this person who was with the wife and the knife he saw hey you come here <laughs> and he said you bloody religious fanatics come here today i will argue i will challenge i will defeat you come here sit here i will not let you go if you go i will throw this and you will die come here sit down i will argue with you and then uh, my friend he was like oh god <laughs> if i go then i will die if i run away then i will die wow so then he was just he was just praying to god oh god if if you if that is your plan that you want me to die then i accept it but i will not die like uh, a weak hearted fellow you know i will fight i will die in the battle <laughs> and then he said okay okay no problem i will talk with you and basically then uh, they had a talk for some 45 minutes mm. and then my friend convinced that person <laughs> to take a bhagavad gita and that uh, that person with a knife <laughs> he not only paid 10 euros for the bhagavad gita the printing charge he also offered a donation of 50 euros he said because of because of you at least i will read something like this otherwise where in the west i will find you know <laughs> so now that's an extreme case god will test us sometimes maybe like that sometimes but at least we can be in the normal world you know doing such stuff and doing our own practices basically we may not be <laughs> because they say that god will give you tests as per your spiritual advancement he will never give you allurements which you cannot overcome you means not anybody but who is on a spiritual path okay so like one of my gurus said you know it will never happen that 10 damsels from the heaven apsaras will come and start dancing in front of you because god knows what will happen the moment you see them <laughs> so that will never happen <laughs> so for us what will happen you know you are going in the internet some pop up will come that's all <laughs> mm. hey click this link click me you know that will happen at max just don't click it <laughs> mm. at least for me these are the level of allurements which i have faced <laughs> and because god knows that if i give him more higher elements he will he will go astray so that's my level of elements and other people as i said you know big big elements so maybe when we elevate ourselves then the tests will also be more and more. rahu will put more tests because he's going retrograde now he will bring more desires from the past lives mm-hmm. and he will just you know plant the bomb mm-hmm. and till the end of your life this battle will go on till the very last moment it is said the battle goes on and this is the biggest battle that we have is to say no to the elements and do spiritual practices the problem with today's religion is they are filled with books of what you should not do oh don't do this don't do that you go to a church or temple they will say 10 things not to do <laughs> I mean, who will go it's such a ridiculous place to go mm. go to any temple church or mosque or oh, 20 things you are not supposed to do but then you tell me what i should do that nobody will tell you <laughs> people are becoming people get frustrated or you only tell me what not to do don't smoke don't eat meat don't do this don't do that then what will i do i'll sit in my home then tell also now what you should do tell what process you have so when we do that then there is gradual transformation <laughs> Anyways, any other questions you have? <laughs> no, it's it's fine. Thank you very much for time you have given to me. Um, no, I know I know it's really late. Um, I'm going to <clears throat> I'm going to edit the interview from now on. So this mm-hmm. is not going to be there. It's going to stop the recording. Uh, but yeah. I would like I would like to ask you. Let me let me. I stop the recording.
If I stop yeah. the recording, I don't leave the meeting.